just because something is on the internet, even on Wikipedia, it doesn't mean it is true. For instance, I looked up my name on Wikipedia and I realized that I was a famous hockey player. I was a famous skier. I was a famous Scottish badminton player. And I was a famous spy novelist. And Wikipedia is not the most accurate place to find information. In fact, when I was studying at the University of Western in London, Ontario, the professor said that no one ever will ever, ever, ever quote Wikipedia in their pages. You automatically fail the paper. He was joking around, but he did not want to see Wikipedia. He did not see it as a reliable source. For instance, I'm just going to talk about a few things that were on Wikipedia that are not true. First is that Sinbad has died. You all know Sinbad from uh, Jingle All the Way, the famous Christmas movie. Well, it said that he had died. And he is still very much living. The next is Tony Blair worships Hitler. Tony Blair is the ex-prime minister for the country of England, and it's said that he worshipped Hitler. Next, Conan O'Brien, who's a late night host, uh, was accused of assaulting sea turtles while canoeing. And next, a student did a paper on dinosaurs, sourcing Wikipedia. And the teacher came out and said, half of the dinosaurs here aren't even real. Someone had made up dinosaurs and put it on Wikipedia. Batman. One of the Batman uh, log entries on Wikipedia said, Batman. And finally, another weird one was they were talking about sadness on Wikipedia and it had a picture of a child crying because they dropped their hot dog. As you can see, Wikipedia is not the most accurate place to get information. But the Bible, God's Word, is an accurate place to get information. It has held the test of time. The Bible is God's word to us. This means that God inspired these human beings to record his words so that we could have God's words given to us so that we could know God. We could know that we're sinful. That we could know that God is loving and he sent us Jesus Christ. That we could know the way to eternal life and that we could know that we have, through Jesus Christ, the hope of heaven. The Bible is God's word to us. The Bible doesn't need fact checkers, because God's words are pure. As Proverbs 30, verse 5 and 6 says, The word of God is pure. Now, what clear message does God give to us in his word? So that we can know him. First, we need to know that God assumed human nature in the person and work of Jesus Christ. In the Bible, we hear about the Trinity. There's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. There's three persons, but one God. Three distinct persons, one God. That's what we call the Trinity, and that's clearly taught in the Scriptures. And in the Word of God, we see that Jesus always existed with the Father. John 1.1, 1, 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. But then God sent His Son. And so Jesus assumed human nature. The Word of God became flesh. Jesus became flesh, as we read in John 1.14. And Jesus lived his life on this earth completely, 100% obedient. Jesus never sinned because he is God. 
but he was held back by certain human limitations. The greatest thing that Jesus did for us was die. Jesus died. And Jesus talked a lot about his death. For instance, in John 10, verse 11, I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd that lays down his life for the sheep. John 10, verse 15, Jesus lays down his life. In John 15, 13, Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for the friends, his friends. And that's exactly what Jesus Christ did for us. Jesus Christ died. He went to the cross. He bore the judgment of God in place of God's people so that they could be free and forgiven and be given pure and blameless and righteous status before God. But Jesus didn't stay dead. God raised him from the dead. And if you read in the Gospel of John, John 20 to 21, when the women and the disciples came to the tomb, Jesus was no longer in that tomb because God raised him from the dead. And Jesus appeared to many of his disciples. Many people saw the Lord Jesus. He was raised from the dead. And this is a miracle. And the resurrection of Jesus uh, shows us the wonderful hope that Christians can have. Those who trust in Christ alone for their salvation, for their deliverance from the punishment of sin. And Jesus speaks about this wonderful hope because of his resurrection in John 14, verse 2 to 3. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so... Would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come and will take you to myself. That where I am, you may be also. Here's this promise of the resurrection that Jesus will return again to judge the living and the dead. And he will take his people, resurrect them, and they will be with Jesus in heaven forever and ever and ever. What is our response to Jesus Christ? First, we have to recognize that God is holy, God is without sin, and that we have to recognize that we ourselves have sinned against God in our thoughts, our attitudes, actions, words. Everything we've done in our life is sin because we haven't done it for God's glory. So first, we need to trust Christ. We need to rely upon Jesus Christ's death. That is why he came. He came to save sinners. He came to die for his people. So we trust in Christ's work that his work does deal with our sin, that we can have forgiven sins because of Christ. But as well, in recognition of our sin, we need to have repentance. This means that we turn from our sin. We have sorrow for our sin, that we hate our sin, we, we flee from our sin, and we come to and we rely upon Jesus Christ. That is the good news of God found in God's faithful word. Thanks for watching and God bless.